So apparently Rich Harris wants to fork JavaScript. Okay, the truth about Svelte. I have been deceiving you all. Oh, by the way, I really like Rich Harris. I, I actually, I should have just had him on for this, but that would, we'd have to like align schedules and take like a week. Anyways, I've, uh, I had you believe that Svelte was a UI framework, unlike React and Vue, etc., because it shifts work out of the client and into the compiler, but a framework nonetheless. Yes, yes, because he also doesn't uh, do this pedantic masturbation about is React a library or a framework. Uh, but that's not exactly accurate. In my defense, I didn't realize it myself until very recently. But with Svelte 3 around the corner, it's time to come clean about what Svelte really is. Svelte is a language. It's fair. It's fair. Specifically, Svelte is an attempt to answer a question that many people have asked. A few have answered. What would it look like if we had a language for describing reactive user interfaces? A few projects have answered this question. Elm, Imba, Idle, Marco, and probably more. I Idle? I don't know this one. Ideal? Ideal? Is that supposed to be ideal? Is that ideal or ideal? I don't know. I can never... Wise? I can never pronounce a Y. You never even know. Maria, Elm. Uh, ideal is an outlier as it's geared toward a specific use case rather than general purpose app development. Uh, but I think it qualifies as an example. I actually really like these type of things that are trying to solve a specific problem as opposed to trying to create general purpose frameworks. I do think there is something to that. That's really, really, uh, that can be really, really good. These projects are very, are all very cool, but there's a reason why they haven't hit mass adoption. They want to control the entire world. You cannot adopt Elm or Iba, uh, Imba, uh, incrementally, and they do need a, a dedicated tooling far beyond just a compiler itself. I, e.g. syntax highlighting, unless you're, uh, a light, unless you like your code a monochrome this is good this is dude this this is such a good point this is exactly what i have my problem right now with zig which is the tooling is just not quite there great language great concepts seems like a real true spiritual successor to see but tooling ain't it yet right uh in some cases elm stands out interop with js ecosystem and le uh, is less than seamless yeah beyond that they have a steep learning curve which is hard to justify when there are so many uh options that are more accessible thinking inside the box what if uh, we had a language that was designed for building reactive user interfaces but also worked with your existing tools what if you didn't need to discard all your years of experience with hitmul css and javascript because it was uh because it extended those languages it would extend HTML by adding JavaScript expressions and markup directives for controlling behavior and reacting to input, syntax for conditionals, loops, and asynchronous values. It would extend CSS by adding uh, a scoping mechanism that kept style, styles from clobbering each other. It would extend JavaScript by making uh, reactivity a language primitive. That's what the dollar sign's for. This is actually really good. Rich is very, very smart. And I effectively, if he handed me Kool-Aid, I would just drink it. I do love HTMX, though. But I could also love Svelte. I feel like Svelte and HTMX are, are the two that I could love. Uh, how do we make reactivity a language primitive without introducing invalid syntax or breaking the relationship with existing tooling like TypeScript by hacking existing syntax? This is another reason. We read this yesterday, and I know it will be on YouTube shortly, which is talking about the ecosystem of JavaScript and why Svelte is so amazing because every single library doesn't need a wrapper when you're using Svelte. It just works. Svelte just works oh you have a library well guess what you don't have to go through all the rigmarole of making it work with react you just simply go import library use in svelte right like that's a very beautiful thing it's like inverted to react react you import react wrapper of said library chart js react and then you use chart js react to render it out because that's the only way to do it whereas with felt you import chart js you set your data to chart.js, you use the docs for chart.js, and you write chart.js, right? That's way better. How do we make reactivity a language primitive without introducing invalid syntax or breaking the relationship uh, with existing tooling like TypeScript by hacking existing syntax? People are saying, well, what, what about uh, Solid.js? Solid.js in some sense suffers the same problem, which is that you ultimately in the end need all these wrappers and it doesn't quite work the same way. You know, uh, when we instrument assignments to variables and properties, we add a dollar statement. Yeah, th this is just a label. Labels are completely valid JavaScript. That's the best part. They're not introducing new syntax. They're using available syntax. A, a little uh, known label construct. That's how you break out of an outer for loop. If you have two for loops, you use a label and you can effectively go to. Uh, that whenever uh, their inputs change value, we tie it all together with an opinionated scheduler. 
Uh, this, to me, is the best of all possible worlds. We can le lean on decades of accumulated wisdom by extending well-known languages, author components in delightfully concise and expressive way, and yet still generate apps that are bleeding edge in terms of performance and everything that goes in it. Always bet on Svelte. Always bet on Rich Harris. I think Rich Harris is an incredibly, incredibly, incredibly smart person, right? Very, very, uh, I'm very impressed by everything he always does. Um, okay. Where are some of the later comments? Do we have some later comments? Okay, so this is actually older than I realized, but this is, it's still completely beautiful. Because when they said Svelte 3, I was like, I thought they are on Svelte 4. Uh, he's the real lawnmower. He's a real lawnmower. Honestly, that man's a lawnmower. I don't want to read the comments. The comments are all stupid. But this is actually really, really good. Which is, the thing I really love about this is that it introduces... Svelte allows you to do a bunch of things kind of in like this one file. And then it kind of compiles everything together. But still, at the end of the day, you're just using HTML. You're just using CSS. You're just using JavaScript. Right? And they have an all built-in like tool that just makes it nice. I just really like it. I think it is really the best thing. And I think the obvious answer of why it's good is truly when it comes to the library importing and the problem with React. I think that truly should be the biggest thing that kind of gives it away, which is if you want to use something and you have to wrap it, you have to add additional complexity, you have to do this constant adapter layering, then maybe what you're building isn't the right abstraction, right? It's a wrong abstraction. It's an inverted abstraction because a good abstraction does not require continuous adapters. A bad abstraction requires continuous adapters, right? If you want to use anything and you have to adapter it, Something is wrong. Something has gone wrong somewhere. I'm not saying it is the worst. I'm just saying there should be red flags. Things should be popping up in your head going, what's wrong? Anyways, I really like Svelte. I really like Rich Harris. The name? I, I, I like Svelte the gym. 